We live? Are we live? I have no idea. I think so. What do I do with the chat? There it is. Let's move this over here. Let's put this here. No idea. I think so. What do I do with the chat? Mute that. Yo, Perry Comics and Rod the Rican. Thanks for joining me, guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? James Watson, what is going on? Thank you for joining me. Is the mic working? Check one, two, one, two. So, um, wanted to do a live video just to kind of show some of these books that I got yesterday at the flea market. As you guys know, every two or three weeks, I work over at the flea market on a Sunday with my buddy. Yeah, look, Rod Jabroni gave me a wrench. I know Rod, Rod's stingy with them wrenches, man. He don't like giving them out. <laughs> so, um, I work with my buddy Alan because he's trying to sell his collection off. He's trying to get, you know, whittle down the 40,000 books to, yo, Big Lion Cat, what is up, man? Thank you for joining. So he's trying to whittle the 40,000 plus comics that he has down to about 100, 150. And then with this money that he's got, he's going to buy himself another copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 because he's a huge Spider-Man fan. So he needs my help out there at the flea market because it's just, it's a lot. So I go out there and he hooks me up with, with books. Um, cuts me a great deal. The first time I went out, he actually gave me everything for free. And then um, the, the next time that I go out there, he just cut me a deal that it's pretty much free, guys. So I wanted to get on here, jump on the uh, jump on live stream because Rod the Rican is always trying to push me and Perry to go live all the time. Just do it live. Edwin, just do it live. Do it live, Edwin. All right. You know what, Rod? I'm going to do it live this time, man. I'm hoping to, to cut this to about 20 to 30 minutes. Jabroni getting a new show called Flea Market Flipping. We, we flipping them, man. But I'm not flipping no books. These are all from my personal collection. But here's another cool thing. I uh, had, a, had a fellow you know, Instagram comic guy hit me up saying that he had some Batman books. He knew I was looking for Batman books, and he was hoping to do a trade. I'm looking to complete my new 52 Batman run, and he had some other Batman books, and he's looking for Thor and um incredible hulk books so i said yeah of course man I've, I've got hulk and thor books that i don't i don't really need in my collection i'd rather have batman books so he kind of told me what he was looking for perfect dude i got him so i got about six or seven books for him and he had whatever i don't know 12 so i'm going to show you those first and this is from uh, aj hernandez i met him i told him hey come to the flea market on sunday i'm going to be out there helping my buddy sell his comics you're going to get a great deal you know, I'll tell him that you're a friend of mine and uh, bring those books and we'll do the trade too. So I know he came away with some really good stuff. SWAT comics at flea market show. Yeah. Swapping comics at the flea market, man. Uh, it's, it's a great place. So let's start off with that new 52 Batman. I have issue one and I have issue two of that new 52 run, but I didn't have like three through 13. So that's what he had. Here is issue number three. Here is issue number four. Love this, guys. If you have not read the new 52 Batman with uh, Snyder and Capullo drawing, it is an incredible read from one all the way to issue 52. Just outstanding stuff, man. Here is issue number five. And especially if you've been reading that Batman, um, uh, Batman The Last Night on Earth, right? If you read that on Wednesday, yo, comic book villain. My fellow San Antonian, fellow San Antonio comic book collector. Hey, I missed you yesterday at the flea market, man. You should have been out there. There was some good stuff to be had. Um, so there's issue five. Here's a really big one. Issue six. This is the first full appearance of the Court of Owls. I think issue, issue number four is the, the cameo appearance of the Court of Owls. So that is that's a book you guys should definitely go out there and get because I think that this, this new Batman movie that they're going to have, um, I think it's going to have some Court of Owls in there. So, you know, if you have a chance, definitely pick up Court of Owls. Uh, number seven. And this is first appearance of Harper Rowe, who ends up becoming a Bat Family member. So that's a good one to get. I actually got one a couple weeks back, but I got the variant issue. So it's good to have the regular. Here's issue number eight. And this is all from, from AJ, who, who had these. He said, you know, I'd rather give Batman books to somebody who likes Batman. 
And uh, I was like, heck yeah, man, I'll take them. And I traded them some Hulk and some Thor that I had that I, you know, hey, I can do without that in my personal collection. Here's issue number nine. Cats wear flea collars, but I would still go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what, man. I've always had really great luck at the flea market here in San Antonio, man. We have like, we got like three or four of them. And they are... Uh, They've always have some good stuff out there. And then, you know, obviously my buddy Alan, he's selling his stuff. But then I have another good friend of mine, Robert. He has a store there that he's, he's always there Saturday and Sundays. And when I can't get to my local comic shop on Wednesdays and pick up what I want, he always has it too. Cause he has, he has a distribution with somebody else and he gets new comics. Man, I wish I could have made it too, man. They did have a small toy show there that I heard about that. They had a small toy like slash comic con at Trader's Village. I heard it was pretty good. There were some guys that went to Bussy's where I was at, Bussy's Flea Market. And then they were like jetting over to Trader's, which is crazy, right? Because San Antonio is huge. and But you have this huge, like 1604, which is this highway that just runs all the way around San Antonio. So where I was at was all the way up in the Northeast. And then Trader's is all the way in the Southwest part of town. It probably takes you like 45 minutes, maybe 35 to 40 minutes to get there from one side of town to the other. So they were they were jetting. We got Andy Alberts, man. What is up, my boy from uh, from across the pond? Did I say it? I don't know. Sounds weird. Whatever. <laughs> Here's uh, issue number 10. I get to talking to you guys and I forget what I'm actually on here to do is show some comics to you guys. Here's a super sweet uh, issue number 11. I like that, man. Look at that. That's a nice one. I'm digging that. And issue 12, which is actually going to be, I had this one. I went through my collection. I noticed that I had this um, issue number 12, Batman there getting hit with that lightning bolt. So I'm loving that. But really, the two issues that kind of hooked me onto this deal with AJ was, this is actually my third copy of this book. This is Batman Annual number 25, which is a super sweet jock cover. This is a is a semi key, semi important key because it it tells you how Jason Todd came back, you know, um, came back from being dead. And, and in this issue, you actually see him like digging out of the coffin and digging out of the ground. Batman Annual Twenty Five, guys. If you see that cover, go pick this one up. And I and I want to say that there is a, a super rare new stand of it. So, and then. The one that I could I couldn't turn it down when, once he told me, and it's not in the best condition, but it's okay because I already have one graded 9.8. But that is Batman 655. This right here, first appearance of Damian Wayne. So that is my second copy. And if you can see, like right there, there's my graded. That is my graded 9.8 one. So nice to have. And it's on a multiple comic Monday on Instagram showing you a book that I have multiple copies of, huh? Lo and behold. So I'm all about getting extra copies of key issues, especially for Batman. So that was a trade from AJ. I traded him like six or seven Marvel books that I that I just had sitting around. I'd probably never read it again for some uh, super sweet Batman stuff. Absolutely had to have more Batman in my collection. I'm actually running out of room in my, my long and short boxes for Batman stuff. So I'm going to have to go and get more uh, comic boxes. So there we go. We'll move these. Let's move these off to the side. Bam. Let's see what's in the uh, in the chat. We still got the same same cats here. Comic book villain, my, my homie, big lion cat, Andy Alberts, Perry Comics. Where's Rod? Rod ain't talking no more, man. Rod, you at work, working hard. I got, I got four slabs, too. So the slabs, we're going to wait till the very end. You can kind of right there, slab. So let's get into, uh, into the Marvel books. Not too much as far as Marvel he had, but there was some stuff that I just, I couldn't do without. What was the cost of the haul? I'll tell you at the end. That first little haul though, Pope that I had, uh, and Gorilla Grodd, thanks for joining guys. Just showing you my, my comic book um, flea market hauls. But that first Batman haul that I had, that was a trade with um, you know a fellow comic, comic guy here in San Antonio. So I traded those. These though, this, everything I'm going to show you now, this is from the comic book. Uh, haul from my buddy Alan. I'll tell you guys as soon as I finish, I'll tell you exactly what I paid for these. So he had some Thundercats, kid of the 80s. Absolutely had to pick these Thundercats up. This is issue number six with Moomra on the cover. What? And what's I can't remember. What was uh 
what was the little cat's name? I wish I could remember. I always remember he's Lion-O. Lion-O. <laughs> uh, here's issue number seven. Yo, Bad Avenger in the house. Thank you for joining us, man. Just kind of going through some uh, flea market haul that I had that I picked up yesterday. This is this is probably one of my favorite Thundercat covers right here. This is Thundercats number eight. And it really reminds me of like that um, that Spider-Man cover, you know, where he's kind of he's like underneath all of the uh, the debris. And uh, I know this one's more of like Lionel holding back, like holding back the the doors and these wa and this water's coming through. But it kind of reminds me of that. And it's a newsstand. You had, what about you guys? Did you watch Thundercats? You know, growing up in the, well, you know, I I was born in '84, so. You know, by the time I, I really grew up and was able to watch cartoons, you know, Turtles and Thundercats, man, that was my thing. I remember collecting the toys, too, having the toys. I absolutely loved it. And then the last one, Thundercats, number 12. So, oh, Snurf, Snarf. Was it who Snarf? You're right, Big Lion Cat, Snarf. Yeah, that was his name. So, yep, there is uh, issue 12. I don't have too many Thundercats. Actually, this is, I got these four, and then I have issue number one from this, uh, you know, this early run. I think it was like 1988. These came out maybe 1989 and they were Star Comics. And something that Alan was telling me was these actually came to you in like a, a brown, like they would they would mail them to you in these brown paper bags. And um, that's why a lot of them aren't in the best condition. That's how he was able to get them. They were mailed to him. Uh, here's a key that was on the Hot Top 10 list a few weeks back, especially with Endgame coming out. Uh, spoiler alert. This is Mighty Thor 390. So uh, if you don't know, this is when Captain America is, you know, picks up Majil Nor, um, Thor's hammer, and actually uses it in battle. So this is the first time he actually does that. So I saw it. I saw it there. I was like, yep, I'm going to grab that. Gorilla Grodd. I thought I was older than you. Yeah, I'm, I'm an old dude, man. Can't you tell? Bald already, dude. Got some white hairs in the beard. 84, man. 84. Thundercats was awesome. Turtles, I was born in 81, so grew up with them all. Yeah, definitely, man. Kids, you know, we're, kids of the 80s, there was, yo, 8-Bit Eric, Eric in the house, what is up? Kids of the 80s, right? We had really two things. We had awesome cartoons back then. I think the 80s was the best time for cartoons. And then uh, Nintendo, right? Nintendo came out in what, 1984, 1985? You grew up with that, man. So that was, that was my big thing. Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, and uh, Nintendo games, which speaking of that, while I'm gone in June, uh, I actually have a top five NES uh, NES game video coming out. So stay tuned for that. Music was good too. Big Line Cat, 84, still a baby. I guess so, man. 8-Bit Eric, 600 subs coming soon. I'm hoping so, man. I collect a lot. Thank you for joining me, guys. Jigs Kingdom, what is up, guys? We're just showing off some flea market books that I picked up um uh, somewhere in the range of like 40 books or so and then i got four uh four slabs so at the end of it at the end of this i'll you know i'll show you everything that i got and then i'll kind of tell you i'll tell you like how much did i really pay for all this stuff but i'm working with my buddy alan these were all of his books and since i help him out at the flea market he kind of pays me in comics so sometimes sometimes that's what you got to do man um i was talking to perry perry comics and rod and just showing off these books, right? I, I love showing the books off and talking to you guys on here. And um, don't don't feel peer pressured to go out and like have to buy these books just because people show them off on YouTube, man. Definitely wait for a great deal, right? That's my disclaimer. Uh, I got these at a great deal and there are great deals to be had out there. So just wait for that really good deal, man. Don't get caught up in the hype of having to have a holy grail comic, right? And having to show them off to people like, Almost all of the slabs that I got or all the comics that I have, I've gotten them at great deals. I have very rarely paid full price or retail price for anything, man. You always got to wait. What do we got here? A lot of you guys are talking. Big Line Cat. Hey, Jigs. Miss you on Saturday. Uh, Jigs Kingdom. DMZE Gaming. What is up, man? He goes by uh, that Bat Batman covers on uh, on Instagram. Old Wolf. What is going on? Thank you for joining me, guys. So last uh, two more Marvel books. I grabbed Annihilation, number one. If you guys don't know, this is a an awesome, awesome, awesome 
Marvel story that was told back in what, 2000, 2008 or 2009. And it all has to do with like outer space. And I really think that this is going to be big coming up, you know, with the Marvel universe. I think they're going to be venturing out into space a little bit more. And Annihilus might be one of those villains that we see in the Marvel U. And uh, he only had one and two. So I picked them up. That is uh, number two with Drax. Drax right there. You got Nova. And these Annihilation covers, man, these things are, that's hot, man. Look at that. Those are badass covers, man. I got to say, super sweet covers. All right, so that's that. Let's get into Independence, man. Independence picked up a few, too. Uh, there's one that is on the Hot Top 10 this week, and I saw it there. I had to grab that. I have not seen the third movie yet. Pope Cerebus, Annihilation, the series I wanted to make sure I had. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Annihilation is an awesome series. There's a lot of tie-ins for it, which a lot of people aren't really into the tie-ins. And myself, I'm, I get caught up in the hype of tie-ins. But Annihilation is definitely that uh, that comic book series. It's, it's worth getting at least the main, that main run. Uh, so this was on. And this is uh, John Wick, number one. And it is signed. And it has, it comes from Midtown. So Perry's going to know all about that. So it's signed by Greg Pack and Giovanni uh, Vallante, Va Valletta. So signed, signed copy of John Wick number one. So I know because the movie came out, this has been picking up a whole lot of heat. There is one issue with this. And down here at the bottom, it has, it's like, I don't know, it got hit or something, but it's, it's not color breaking or anything. So if I ever do get this graded, I could get that, you know, pressed out. But I'm not big into collecting signed books unless they're graded already and I get a yellow certified label. But I couldn't pass up, man, John, this John Wick, uh, number one sign. That's cool, too. That's just like the cherry on top, guys. Uh, next up, last time I was out there with with uh, Alan, he told me to pick up this series from him, but he only had issue one and two. And he said he'd go home and find issue three and four. And this is from Alterna Comics. This is the chair number three. Uh, so now I have I have issues one, two, three, and here's issue four, which is probably the coolest one, right? Like, who does that remind you of, guys? Right? That totally looks like the Joker right there. I'm digging that. Yo, Big Lion Cat, thank you for joining, man. Just thanks for stopping by, um, saying hi. Old Wolf says, send it to CBCS. I can, but I'm going to be 100% transparent with you. I hate CBCS cases right? I, I absolutely cannot stand those cases. And I have maybe six or seven CBCS slabs and it just, it doesn't feel the same. Like actually, I'm going to show you, I have one right up here. So here is amazing, amazing Spider-Man 361. First appearance of Carnage 9.4. I just, I don't like these cases, man. Let me, let me know if you guys get if you guys have slabs, like what do you think of the cases between the different um, the different companies? I'm not a fan of PGX cases. They just feel cheap to me. I even did a, I kind of did a um, like a, a little science project thing, and I had my wife blindfolded, and I gave her a CGC, a PGX, and a CBCS, and um, you know I had her tell me like which one did you think is is the better quality out of them. She didn't know, she doesn't know anything about them, but she, you know, she, she said, Hey, the CGC is, is the better quality out of them. I know a lot of people have issues with that rainbowing effect, rainbowing effect on the, on the CGC, but I've never really had a big issue with that. I might have one that has some rainbowing or whatever that, what do they call it? The rainbow jizz on there, but that's just me guys. That's just my opinion. Uh, that is not, that's a DC book. Uh, so <clears throat> here's another one I picked up. This is from Image. I'm looking for issues one and two. He didn't want to get rid of issues one and two, which I totally understand because this is an awesome series. But I got Killer Be Killed number three. Number number four. And these are awesome, man. I, these covers for Killer Be Killed. I don't know if this is, is this a series you guys have read? Um, I know the kind of the plot points of Killer Be Killed. And here is number five, Killer Be Killed number five. We got Jeff Comic in the house. What is up, my man? Thank you for joining me, brother. Thank you for, for stopping by for a little bit, supporting me. Um, I can see the rainbow on my Spawn 150 sketch cover. Yeah, I mean, there is some that, that rainbowing, 
it, it happens. I don't know. I rem it, it wasn't such a big deal a few years ago, but like, oh, there's AJ. Yo, AJ, I showed off those Batman books, man, that you uh, that we did the trade for. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Yeah, Killer Be Killed. So this, I haven't read it, but I I, I, I get the kind of uh, what's going on is this guy, I think he, he wanted to commit suicide and he, he like jumps off a building, but midway in the jump, he's like, what the hell did I just do? Um, he doesn't die, but he ends up like selling his soul or something to the devil. I, it, dude, if I'm wrong, Pope, tell me. But so instead of dying, now he has to kill somebody once a month or something, once a week, or he's going to die. So now he ends up becoming like a hitman or something, like an assassin, so he can stay alive. He has to have one kill to give this soul to whoever it was. Something like that. I've heard it's a really great series. I think it ends at issue 15 or something like that. But issue one goes for a little bit of money. So I'm hoping to find number one at some point. But yep, Killer Be Killed. And the last indie book, another image, number one. What do we got here? Or maybe he didn't and he just has to kill people. Something like that. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to spoil anything at the, for the end, but I haven't read it. I definitely got to read it. I've heard great things about it. And another image, number one, this is Oblivion Song. Uh, Robert, what is it? Robert Kirkman, right? Yeah, Robert Kirkman. I like, I really dig that cover too. Um, this is the only, I have one other Oblivion Song. I think it's issue number five because there was a secret variant for that one. And it had, um, there was a secret variant without a little frog and there was one with a frog. So I don't know. That's the only issue I have. I've never read Oblivion Song, but I've heard some pretty good things. What is up? Yo, Jim Boatwright in the house. What's up? Another Floridian. So who do I got? Perry, Jim, Rod, Jeff, I think Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Comics from Florida. We need more Texas people in the house, guys. What is up? No, no Texas love, man. As big as Texas is, right? You would think there'd be more comic, YouTube comic people out there. That Oblivion song, big money, but I think it's the, it's the one with the cape facing to the left. Oh, here. There you go. Now, is it facing to the left now, Perry? Huh? Let me see. Let me put it upside down. There you go. Last issue, Killer B Kill B cover has sweet homage cover. Swipe ASM. Yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go out there and find a man. You know, my uh, <coughs> my <laughs> my big thing is. There's so many image number ones and image books out there. Yeah, much mucho better. So many image books out there that I pick and choose which ones. I always damn pick and choose the wrong ones, right? I pick something that that sucks and it only has like two issues and they stop it. And then I, I don't pick up the ones that people are like, yeah, that's a great one. You should have gotten it. Yeah, I didn't get it. Like Middle West. Is Middle West the image? I never picked it up. I, man, I wish I would have, dude, because all I've heard is awesome things about Middle West, man. So... That is Marvel and Indies. Let's get let's get into the big the big stuff. This is the the DC DC stuff right here, man. A lot of Batman in here. Um, this is the newest book I picked up, though. This is Flash seventy one. This is part of that um, the year one story. This is the A cover. I went all around San Antonio looking for this A cover because my comic shop, they only had the B cover for me. So I could not find this A cover to save my life. So while I was out there at the flea market, one of the vendors there that I know really well, Robert, he had it. So, um, you know, he sold it to me for cover price, man. Very calm flash. There you go, Rod. Yeah, definitely, dude. Middle West's image is test and you can get the trade from first arc. Dude, so as far as trades go, I can do trades. I have some trades. It's cool. But I love, what, what do they call it? I love collecting the floppies, right? The floppies, right? Single issues. I love having the single issues, man. I, I don't know what it is. As far as trades, I guess if I really have to, I'll get it. Like that Mr. Miracle I have in the trade, one issues one through 12. I think that's an awesome buy. But I'd rather just have the, the single issues. Oh, AJ Hernandez, you got issue two, Middle West. Tell me when you got issue one. We'll do some more trades, bruh. Do some more trades. Uh, here's another one, man. Wonder Woman number 19. Picked this up while I was out there from Alan. That is um, first full appearance of Cersei, who's supposed to be, you know, a big bad in the, the DC universe. And she's going to have a major role to play in, uh, I think, in Justice League Dark here very soon. Word to Jabroni. I'm getting the floppies, man. I, I, I'm digging getting the floppies, man. Um, here's the first appearance I didn't have. 
And when I saw it in his box, I was like, yeah, I definitely got to get this, man. This is that static number one, the collector's edition. This one is the uh, poly bagged. Speaking of, I need floppy cop number two. I haven't even seen a floppy cop. When number one came out, my LCS didn't have it. Number two, my LCS didn't have it. Um, I know Jim, Jim Comics is always talking good stuff about it. He said he liked that first issue and the second issue. Static number one. Is this the first appearance you guys got from DC? 90s character. First appearance. It was a cartoon. Uh, you, you never know when these cartoon characters, you know, from DC's past are going to blow up and come back, man. You know. Obviously, Harley Quinn is the is the the top, right? Her Batman Adventure 12 is a ridiculously expensive book. But I went and picked up that that Superman, Adventures of Superman, which is that first appearance of Livewire. Definitely had to get that because you never know if that's another female villain character from the cartoon that they want to bring back and, and do big things with. So be on the lookout, man. I know this has like, I think it has like four different versions, uh, variants, right? This is the, the collector's edition poly bag, but there's like three others that aren't poly bag. Picked up uh, Green Lantern 51, Kyle Rayner on the cover. I'm not the biggest Green Lantern fan. I, I, I can read Green Lantern. I, I dig it. I'm not actually reading the, the, the ongoing story right now. I uh, kind of got bored reading it. I read the first two or three issues. I was like, ah, this is not for me. But Kyle Rayner was always one of my favorite Green Lanterns because, you know, when I started collecting in the 90s, Kyle Rayner was the Green Lantern. He was the only Green Lantern. So that's what I remember. He was on Justice League and I was reading Justice League and it was Kyle Rayner as the only Green Lantern. So definitely dig uh, this one. This is shortly after he became the Green Lantern, right? Because Parallax happened in issue like 49 or 50 and then he becomes the Green Lantern in issue 50. So definitely digging that. Uh, picked up Justice League number one. This is the black and white uh, variant, Jim Lee variant. Digging that. If you guys aren't reading Justice League, you really you, you need to get on that because Justice League has been a dope story since issue number one. Issue number one. What do we got going on in the uh, here? You guys reeking. It was silly. It made me laugh. I collect a lot. Got lucky. Picked up floppy number two. Dude, I have not been able to find that floppy cop. Here's a here is Batman and Robin, the Batman and Robin, the boy wonder number one. This is the Frank Miller and Jim Lee. So I picked up number one and he had uh, he had the Frank Miller variant. I didn't even know Frank Miller did variants for these uh, uh, Batman and Robin. This is these are like the uh, yeah all star DC all star. It is insane. If you haven't read or just. If you have that DC Universe app, they have a few of them on there, like the first 10 issues. This all-star, Batman and Robin all-star comics from Frank Miller is an insane read, man. It is a diff totally different take on Batman. Very early on, before you know Dick Grayson becomes Robin, he kind of goes through that story of how his parents were killed, and then Batman or Bruce Wayne takes him in. But it is a much darker look at Bruce Wayne and how big of an asshole he kind of is, man. It is... It's it's a weird read. There's there's a whole lot of dialogue in there that probably shouldn't have been written into a comic book. Bad Avengers, the number one, the uncensored variant. I don't know if number one, there's there's a few, excuse me. Yeah, I believe had the bad words. It's not just number 10. That's the thing. If you read issue seven or you read issue eight, they're saying a lot of bad words. A whole and I don't mean bad words, like I'm a little kid, like. They're saying words that really shouldn't be in a Batman book, man. It, it doesn't have a black label. I know issue 10, they like, they, they blacked out, I think, where he calls Robin a retard or something. I think that's what it was. He called somebody a, a retard and it's not blacked out, but that's not the only time he's done it. Like in, in issue seven or issue eight, it's the same thing. Issue seven is crazy because that's where him, um, him and Black Canary have sex on the docks while... The villain, the bad guys, the henchmen are, are like burning up on the docks because they threw gasoline and, a, and lit a flame and they're all burning up and him and Black Canary are, are doing it on the docks. It's insane read, man. It's pretty dope. Uh, here's number two. There's number two. And I got also the Frank, the Frank Miller variant to it too. <laughs> Comic book villain, I'm tired. Just finished posting All Star Batman and Robin on IG. Awesome covers. They are awesome covers. But I'm telling you, man, the read is insane. Like, wow, Frank Miller over the top. 
<clears throat> so you guys know huge Joker fan. So he had this Joker book. Uh, nothing, nothing great about it. Um, it's just a Joker cover, and it's not even that good of a Joker cover. Batman Confidential number ten. Crazy series. I'll have to do it for a full run video. Frank Miller was high on himself back then. Yeah, I think he's still high on himself. Um, it's it's an insane read, man. Here's Batman Gotham Knights. That is number 72. This is from February of 2006. I haven't read a lot of these Gotham Knight books. I'm going to have to get into it. I have a few of them. These actually, these next two right here, uh, these are doubles for me. I actually already have these. This is Gotham Knights 73 with Joker fighting Hush on there. And then here is 74, another Joker Hush. So love that. Let's move these out of the way, put them up. And again, these are all, you know, flea market finds uh, from my buddy, Alan. Everything I got here, Alan had any, um, you know, he already had a box for me, right? Because I, I get there early and I help him unload everything from his from his truck. And he's like, well, don't don't put this box out, Edwin. This is this is for you to go through first. Look, look through these books first. Anything you want, pick through there and we'll talk at the end of this. So that's what I did. All these came from the same. Oh, damn. Got to get back to work. Hope everyone have a good day. Dope books, Jabroni. Be careful. Swinging them guns. <laughs> you guys are nuts, man. Always, always messing with me. What, uh, how does, um, how does Reggie say it? Your, your friendly comic book bodybuilder or something like that? Or I don't know if I'm, I'm as uh, friendly as that. AJ Hernandez, they went quick. Yo, he's not lying. AJ was there early, like 8.30, and they were to already sell. They were, he was already selling them. And by 9.30, they were all gone. Everything he had, dude, was all gone. Aggressively relaxing. What is up? All-Star Series never lives up to the All-Star Superman quality. Um, I've read a little bit of the All-Star Superman, which is pretty good, and they have it on the DC Universe app. Second Street Marvel, thanks for joining, man. What is going on? Just showing some flea market books that I got. Uh, getting into the last little bit of it. I still have my four, the four slabs I'm going to show off. Uh, here's Batman Secrets, number one. Sam Keith drawn, which... Um, gonna let you know i'm not the biggest sam keith like fan or artist it's it's an acquired taste is what i've been told with sam keith uh here is number two at batman secrets and this is a five part uh five part miniseries which i don't i only have this is the third one this is the last one pretty cool joker cover there at one time batman confidential joker story was considered the canon origin story i don't know how though i don't know I'm going to have to check it out. Can't wait for a video this week. What do you guys think of that? Uh, that Joe, that's a that's a pretty creepy Joker cover, man. Bodingen Comics, what is up? Bodingen, I'm on the lookout for those uh, that Iceman four-part miniseries for you, okay? Uh, Alan, Alan sold them. They were gone, man. But there's so many local comic shops here in San Antonio. I'll be able to find those for you. Um, this is one that Alan had texted me earlier in the week, said, asked me if I wanted him. I said, heck yeah, man. I, I've never even heard of this story. Uh, this is Batman Gotham County line number one. And these are, this is more of a prestige, uh, comic. It's a thicker, thicker book cardstock cover. And that's number one of three. There's number two, two of three. And here is Number three of three. This is a cool cover. I, man, anytime I can see a cover with like the blacks and the reds like that, I think that's amazing, dude. Awesome. Pope Cerebus. Uh, Keith has great moments in his own titles, but doing mainstream characters all little more hit and miss. It's, I know he just did, they did that Max, Max and Batman run. What was it, last year? I don't even know if they're still coming out with that. And I picked up the first one because it had a Jim Lee cover. But dude, I went through and I started trying to read it. And the artwork is, to me, it's ugly. I, I apologize if you guys absolutely love Sam Keats' artwork, but to me, it's ugly, and I couldn't get through. <laughs> I couldn't get through the whole book, man. I just, I was like, what the hell am I looking at? Aggressively relaxing that black and red Batman. Yeah, dude, that is an awesome cover. I can't wait to read this. I've, I've never heard of this Gotham County line. I don't know if any of you guys have read it, but uh, yeah, this is stuff. Great stuff, bud. I need to get back to work. Take care, guys. Hey, thanks, guys. Um, listen, for anybody in the chat, Tomorrow night, myself, Rod the Rican, and Perry Comics, we're going to be on Buyer Pass. It's going to be on my channel tomorrow at 7, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're just going to be talking about New Comic Book Wednesday. 
All right, getting down to the nitty gritty, guys. Almost done. Batman Year 100. There's number one. Yet another Batman story I have not read. Here is issue number two. And these two are like, uh, these are thicker, like more prestige, kind of like that Batman Last Night on Earth that came out this week or that Leviathan Rising. And here is <clears throat> Batman Year 100, number three. So I am missing, I am missing number four on that. I'm going to have to do some digging. Uh, let me see. See, Rocky did a good job on Incredible Hulk. I have not read that. I haven't read that series. Paul Pope, take on Batman is cool. Is that Paul Pope cover on Batman 100? It is Paul Pope. And I think Pope does, he does the interiors on this too. And that's a pretty trippy like Batman cover right there, man. And again, that black, black and red. <clears throat> and there is a second printing to this, which I think is more red. I think the red comes up to like more around here. When I picked up Son of the Demon, I was thinking, man, Edwin loved this book. Absolutely would, sir. Absolutely. In the last Batman books I got, here is Batman Grendel, Devil's Riddle. This is book number one. And book number two, which I dig that. I don't know anything about Grendel. Can you guys tell me anything about Grendel? I've, I've never read a Grendel book. I know that, um, what is it, that com uh, the Primo, Primo, com comic, Primo Comico or something like that is his first appearance, and it goes for crazy amounts of money. Love the Pope cover on Faithless number two. Yeah, Faith, uh, Faithless is insane, man. I read that first issue, and I told myself, you know, this is pretty cool. I'm going to pick up that issue number two. And I, I read issue two. I was like, what the hell? This is insane, man. And it's from Boom. Oh, Comical Primer. Thank you, Pope. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a hard book to find, too, man. That, that first appearance of Grendel. It's a sweet cover, too. I like that. I like that old school looking cover on there. So those are the single issues from Alan. Let's get into the four. Um, Let's get into the four slabs. First up, I'm going to save that for last. First up, we got this Wizard Ace Edition, Avengers number four. Got that, 9.8. And this is just a um, this is a, uh, a reprint of Avengers number four. Dude, Faithless issue two is nasty. <laughs> it is nasty, man. Uh, so happy to have this. Got that one. I uh, picked up. Amazing Spider-Man number 430. Lower grade, I mean 8.0. It's not the best, but it's still a really sweet cover. This is um this is actually, I don't want to kind of get that glare out of the way. <clears throat> Borinkin Comics money shot. So if you don't know, this is when um Carnage actually gets the powers of Silver Surfer and he rides the uh Silver Surfer, the, the, the surfboard. And um he had he had both of them actually graded, but this was the higher of the two. This was an 8.0. I think his his next one was was a low. It was like a 4.5 or something. It was super low. He's he's just getting a lot of his a lot of his slabs that he's not selling, or a lot of the slabs that he is selling are a lot of his wall art. He he said he would love. He just loved getting comics slabbed. Didn't care about the the grade. He would just put them up on the wall. So he's selling a lot of those. So that's why like he has this 8.0, but he at the house probably has a 9.8, 9.6 that he's not going to sell. So definitely wanted to get that. I like that. I like that Carnage cover. Here's another one. Low, uh, It's a low grade, but a book that I didn't have. So I picked it up. Amazing Spider-Man 265. First appearance of Silver Sable. Low grade, but what do they, what do they say? Uh, low grade is better than no grade, right? Sweet slab digging that cover. RLMS, what is up, man? Thanks for joining. I can tell you all about 6.5 Grendel. Do you have a 6.5? Andy Albert says Grendel Batman story is a weird one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick it up. I'm gonna have to open it up and read it, man. Got to split. Everyone have a great day. Awesome books. Hey, thanks, Jim. In the last book, and then we'll get into what I paid for all of this stuff. Uh, this is Conan the Barbarian, number 275. That is the last... Um, the final issue of the original Marvel Comics Conan run. All black cover, crazy hard to find in a high grade. This was the highest grade that he had of this book, 7.5. So I told him, yeah, I'll definitely take that. I, I dig me some Conan, especially this new Conan run. So to get it in 7.5, it's still pretty good. I know my the, my LCS actually has one right now. And it's, it's probably about this. 
it's probably maybe seven five eight zero, and and they want like a hundred dollars for it. It's crazy, man. What can come is low grade is better than no grade. Yeah, seriously, man. High grade is better than buying an upgrade. <laughs> That's <laughs> I like that. So, anyways, for all of this, I don't exactly know how many. There was probably like thirty five to forty books or so. At the end of the day, I'm helping them put it. I didn't even have to put anything away because somebody came in and bought everything he had and everything that was left. He bought it all. Uh, I paid 80 bucks for all this stuff, man. I don't know. I think that to me, I think that's an awesome, you know, uh, an awesome deal for myself. $80. You get four slabs out of it. Got a bunch of badass Batman stuff. Um, great deal. There is great deals to be had out there, guys. Don't fall into the peer pressure of having to buy um, Pope Cerebus loved that last issue of Conan. Yeah, don't fall into the peer pressure of having to buy a Holy Grail just because everybody else has Holy Grails, right? There are shows out there that talk about having Holy Grails, and I'm not I'm not trying to crap on nobody, man. I love everybody's YouTube channel. I watch everybody's YouTube channel, but sometimes we fall into this peer pressure of having to go and buy a comic because somebody else said, this is an awesome comic or anything like that. And, oh, it's going to cost you 50 bucks, but I think it's really going to be worth having. And then in a year from now, it's a $10 book or a $5 book. So just wait for the great deals. 80 bucks. Yeah, dude. 80 bucks. But here's the thing about Alan, right? I've, I've worked, I worked with Alan when I first got out of the army uh, at the hospital overnights. I worked with him for three, three and a half years. We, we became really, really great friends. <clears throat> and, um, you know, he gives me great deals, I, I have to admit. And um, I help him out at the com at, he calls me his muscle. Right. He's he's a small little redheaded guy. Like he's probably like five foot four. So when I'm out there, he's he's like, oh, Ed, Edwin's got. He's my muscle. This this is the muscle. He's gonna take care of anybody trying to rob me. <laughs> Yo, Kenny, what is up, my man? Thanks for joining. You you're here at the end, brother. I just showed off my my flea market finds. I'm definitely gonna have this up for replay. So watch it. Showed four slabs off, and I picked up I don't know like forty books or so, forty comics, all for the low the low low of uh like 80 bucks man it was it wasn't a bad wasn't a bad weekend so um for everybody that that showed up this was totally impromptu uh thanks for joining guys what's a holy grail yeah i don't know to me the only holy grail for me is that detective comics 27 i'll never own it so i'll never have a holy grail i guess um so everybody thanks for joining guys remember tomorrow night buyer pass it's gonna be on my channel but we're gonna have myself obviously uh perry comics and Rod the Rican, we're going to be talking uh, new comic book day pickups. So until next time, guys, take it easy. What? Peace? What? Something like that. Out.